No, not put the plan B's down. Close your legs. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's plan that's plan a plan, oh plan a god plan a close your legs like 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 girl we in medieval time calling out all my nerds freaks and geeks it's my time don't you me cause the showtime go ahead and call the gang up for the one time rap food rhymes got them on the line and my life's still great i'm doing just fine hands up What's up, y'all, and welcome to the Blurred Mob, your hub for all things black and nerdy. I'm your host, Foop, joined by my co-host, Ron. If you're listening to this on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or any other streaming service, make sure you hit that follow button so you can get updates from the mob. And if you anime lovers, TV watchers, and movie theater goers are watching us on YouTube, make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, turn on those bell notifications for future uploads, and share with a friend so that they so that they can discover this amazing content. And now it's his turn to start fucking up the words. He laugh at me when I can't get my shit right, but look at him. I I, I fixed it on the spot. I fit. Look, we built a plane <laughs> while we fly. That's my go-to phrase. But we're back with episode 47 of the Blur Mob podcast. How's it been going, Ron? Chilling, bro. My moving date is getting closer and closer, and I don't want to spend money on these movers. I'm about to hit up my homeboy who owe me some money and be like, hey, it's time to pay them dues because I got to spend money. I hit up your homeboy. He looking at the mover price. Hmm. So-and-so owe me money. (laughs) He do owe. Like, he do owe. Like, when I let folks borrow money, I recognize that there's an 80% chance you're not going to get it back. But I was like, let me hit them up. Just to check. Be like, hey, you remember that money? I'm moving, you know. Times are remember, hard. Remember when I gave you that, that that money on the side? Times are hard. And I was just wondering if you could slide that back. Look, might have to send them the screenshots from the cash out deposits just to remind them. Because they'll be like, oh, you some money? I'm like, yeah, remember I got a screenshot right here. <laughs> it should be in your cash app log, too. Let me tell you something about black people and money. They may not ask you for it immediately, but they gonna remember you owe them some money. They never forgot that you owe them some money. Mm-mm. They might let it slide. They might, you know, keep it in their back pocket, but they will never forget that you owe them money. Every time you go out, I'm watching. I see I see you going out. I see your nice little clothes. I'm looking at the logo. I'm like, mm, I don't think you got that at Marshall's or Ross. You might I think you pay like full price, even if it was a summer sale. That's a nice shirt, that nice looks, shoes. That looks like that costs how much money you owe me. That so is, you do have mm, to- <laughs> right. Right. That, you that do have, like the money you, you owe me. Money. <laughs> you living a life of luxury right now and you're in debt. Wow. Wow. Keeping up with it. Hey. One thing I learned from my auntie is get them folks their money. Don't because ain't nobody finna be all up in my phone talking about you. If I borrow money for somebody, I get that shit back immediately. You're not finna be upside my head talking about you owe me money. Nah, do not. I do not play with black people about their money. See, and that's me, bro. I feel guilty even asking folks for money. I'll go to my mama before I ask anybody for money. But like when folks feel confident asking me for money, I'm like, you gonna pay me back? I know you're not, but. I'm going to ask you just so that you can feel guilty when you realize you owe me some money. Mm. I ask people for money for fun. And we see what happens. We we see what happens. <laughs> sometimes sometimes yes. I fail. Sometimes I fail. I don't get money. But sometimes I do get a little cash out thing. And I'll be uh, like, oh, okay. Uh, bet. And this, is, and this is from the first or second richest friend in my friend group, by the way, y'all. The first or second. Honestly, honestly, definitely the first. Because I'm all up in, I'm all up in Foop's pockets. Yeah, he think he Wells Fargo in my shit. I, I I know what everybody got. I know what everybody got. I <laughs> I be nosy. I like to know. What's the uh what's that post on the wall back in grade school? You miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take. So I just I ask for fun. If they say no, they say no. <laughs> and I ain't even mad. I wouldn't even be mad. But sometimes I get a little she kaching like, kaching. Look, got that universal hat. I see you. How you been living? I really like this hat. I got this. It's kind of cold. Not, not the last time I went to Universal. When I went in February, I got this hat. I like it. 
it's giving like director vibes. Like you finna direct a movie for Universal or something. I if I was to do anything for Universal, I want to be in charge of like the theme parts, like the whole crew that's involved for like building out Epic Universe, or even the crew who's like involved in like, okay, we're about to lose the rights to this property. What are we going to turn this area into next? Like things like that. That's what. That's what. If I had to work for Universal, that's what I would want to do. Honestly same i if they got like an anime sector and they be like hey here's our relationship with japan i'll be like put me in that one put me in that one i got some ideas for an anime section like i i will yeah definitely would want to be involved in like the theme park areas like making the rides how we're going to do promos and things like that like getting the contracts the negotiations and stuff like that 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 seems like it would be fun i mean to me once once you get your master's, you could switch industries. Like, what's funny? You saying it's like it's a dream job, but realistically, you could go for something like that. <laughs> you could go for something I like could. that. I could. <laughs> I have to see what they're t- they talking about. They might try to make me move to Florida. I'm not saying that's something wrong with Florida. I just, can't do the, I just can't do the rain. I hate rain. I hate rain. And then y'all talking about hurricane season. I don't like, I don't do all that. That's not me. Yeah. That's not that me. That hurricane that just sw- swung through. Mm-mm. Can't deal with that flooding and stuff. It was raining when I was in Epcot. Like, it's bright outside. And then I get to, like, America, like, the middle of the theme park. And it's pouring down rain like cats and dogs for 20 minutes. I'm stuck in the bathroom. Everybody else running because I mean, like it's Florida, so everybody knows, like everybody knows, like the situation, like it rains in Florida, whatever. But just like having to deal with that every day, like that's that's annoying to me. I don't like that. Mm-hmm. You gotta keep an umbrella in your back like seat that. at all times, just in case. A poncho, a poncho in my back pocket, like nah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It it didn't give. Maybe summer home. You know, I get enough money. Give me a little summer home in Florida. And you know what? When it's not hurricane season or if it's one of those uh, dead months where it's not a lot of people going, you know, I might slide through there. We hit up Orlando when it's less than peak in there. I could see that because everybody talks about like a vacation home in Miami. And it's like, I don't really want to go to the beach, but give me some free lodging for Disney World and Universal. Now we're talking about some. We got some good vibes. I mean, you going. Could, I mean, like you could still drive. Even that I too. agree. Like even if you got a summer home in Orlando, you could just just drive to the beaches. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They ain't that far. It seems like you lagging a little bit on my end. You lag. I'm lagging on your end. You're not lagging for me, but I see my upload speeds at like eighty five percent. Y'all donate to that Kofi link. Yeah. Wow. My rent right now is in an apartment. Tell Ryan to go up. ahead and move. Tell Ryan to call tell Ryan to call the movers today. Hey, my lease agreement been signed. I got two more weeks. And I'll be there. It's gonna be lit. The folks watching, y'all ain't gonna, gonna be see. able to tell because my background gonna be the same, but it's gonna be nice. It's gonna be nice. We gonna we gonna tell by them upload speeds. That's how we gonna know we cooking with some. When them upload speeds get on point, look, that's how we know we gonna be cooking with something. Look, I'm I'm guessing they mad that we talking about them because they they jumped up now. They in the nineties now, we're cooking with grease. All right then, maybe that then that's the key then. Talk shit about the software and it'll work better. There we go. Like you trash. <laughs> oh, Spectrum Internet. Never dealing with y'all no more. All right, we talk too much shit. They gonna cut the cut the connection off. No more episode. <laughs> we didn't miss out on a Brandon deal. <laughs> you remember that episode where you said Spectrum Internet sucks? Yeah. And Ryan was, I don't know. I don't, I don't recall. They got the snippet right here. You can stick to your Kofi links, the blurred mob. <laughs> That's where well, let's go at. ahead and get into these um, topics today. So, just to give everybody a heads up, 
This, this is going to be an entertainment-heavy episode. Um, not a lot of video game news or business tech news that came across the board. Um, if you want to hear what's coming up with video games or tech, check out our last episode. We talked about all of the video game showcases that um, went down last month. And we talked about um, Apple's WWDC 2024. So... That's currently what we have going on and what we're waiting for in the future as far as games and tech. So, just letting you know, no video games or tech this episode. But let's get into this entertainment. So, as we always say, this is your hub for all things black and nerdy. So, we have a few announcements about some upcoming um, movies, series, and anime that are coming up this year. And, uh going towards 2025 and 2026. We want to let you guys aware so you can know what to look for. And also, some of these series we might be doing mob reviews for. So if you're feeling a little eh when we say it, just wait for the mob review and we'll let you know whether or not this was a <laughs> hit or a miss. So starting at the top, Futurama Season 12 is debuting on Hulu July 29th. Batman The Cape Crusader animated series on Amazon Prime is dropping August 1st. The Umbrella Academy, the final season, is debuting on Netflix August 8th. Watchmen, Chapter 1 animated movie, is dropping on Max August 13th. Rick and Morty, the anime, is dropping on Adult Swim in Max, I believe, on August 15th. Terminator Zero, the Terminator anime, is dropping on Netflix August 29th. Agatha All Along, the WandaVision spinoff series on Disney+, Plus, is coming out September 18th. Abbott Elementary, I believe this is season four, um, is dropping October 9th. And I believe that will be on Hulu as well, like it's always been. Shangri-La Frontier, season two, drops October 13th. The My Hero Academia movie, My Hero Academia, You're Next, drops October 11th, 2024. Gladiator 2, um, this is a movie, drops November 22nd with Denzel Washington and... um. Not Oscar Isaac. What's his name? Uh, old dude from The Last of Us. Pedro Pascal. Names. There we go. Pedro Pascal. Um, the trailer just the first trailer just dropped for Captain America: Brave New World that drops February fourteenth, twenty twenty five. Now you see me three drops November fourteenth, twenty twenty five, and we finally got the date for Shrek five. If you thought that was a joke, it wasn't a joke. Not a joke Shrek at all. Five, it wasn't a joke at all. Shrek five drops July first, twenty twenty six, in the original cast: Mike Myers, Cameron Diaz, and Eddie Murphy will be returning. I want all the kids to get out the way. This is not for y'all. It this is. This is for, not. It's not for. It's not for y'all. You iPad babies, what y'all call Gen Alpha, Gen ZZ, or whatever y'all is. This not ain't y'all. This millennials and older Gen Zs only. We the Shrek fans. This is. Us. This is. I am curious to see what the plot line is because I was not a big fan of Shrek Four. I was barely yeah. a fan of Shrek Three. Like if we re if we really want to talk about the Shrek franchise at its peak, is Shrek one, Shrek two, Shrek three slides. Shrek four was to me, in my opinion, was awful. Shrek three was watchable. Here, here's the thing about Shrek four. When I first watched it, I just thought it was like eh. And now when I watch it as an adult and I really analyze it, it's like uh, they had a cool premise, but it was not executed well at all. Like not at all. I can't even tell you the last time I went and watched Shrek 3. Like, that's just when I think Shrek, I'm either watching the first one or the second one. Nine times out Most of ten, it's the second one. I've definitely watched Shrek 1 and 2 at least eight to ten times each at this point. So I agree. I'm curious about um, what the plot line is going to be for Shrek 5. Now, that Captain America trailer... I need to read up more. There seems to be some controversy surrounding some of the characters in the trailer. So, but my initial reaction to the trailer, I don't know. Red Hulk being in the movie, I was like, okay, okay. They said Red Hulk was coming. So then they confirmed it in the trailer. I was like, okay, bet. 
Um, the rest of it, I'm not so sure about, um, given that I'm not a big Captain America fan to begin with. Let's just lay that out. Me neither. And for the Steve Rogers trilogy, the only movie that I actually liked was Winter Soldier. And then I wasn't a big fan of Falcon and the Winter Soldier, the Disney Plus series, when he when Sam actually became Captain America. So I am not sure. I don't I guess I don't wanna say I'm neutral. I, I have no thoughts. I have no thoughts on the situation. I'm mostly neutral, not really negative, because I didn't see anything that just looked bad to me. But it's also like, like you said, I'm not interested in Captain America as a hero, or the mm-hmm. Hulk, or I forgot the name of the dude who um took on the mantle Falcon. of Captain America. Falcon, I wasn't the big, biggest fan of Falcon either. So it's like, eh, if it comes out and there's nothing else in theaters, and you and the blurry mob is like, hey, we should go watch it to do a review, I'll watch it. But nothing about it excited me. Like, honestly, I was going to ask you, are the rumors about them doing a reboot and starting over now that they have all of their IPs under their belt true, or does it seem like they're just going to slowly merge that stuff was... as they go on? So that rumor was tied to Secret Wars, which is the big multiversal plot line that we are supposedly supposed to be leading up to as part of this multiverse saga. And at the end of Secret Wars, the two conflicting universes collide and they make a new universe which could spur a reboot for the mcu with the fantastic four and x-men and everybody just jumping in well they're already coming well they're already coming out with fantastic four that's coming i think next i think that's coming out i think fantastic four is coming out next year 2025 so but i think that would give them room i think that would give them room to introduce the x-men because in this point of time, I'm not really sure how they're going to really push the point. They tried to do a little bit of it with Miss Marvel because they have retconned Miss Marvel's character to where she is a mutant in both the MCU and the comics. Okay. Um, I believe Namor Namor is also supposed to be a mutant. They mentioned a bit of that in Wakanda Forever. Um interestingly enough. Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver are also supposed to be mutants, but when they debuted, Marvel, Disney Marvel did not have the rights to the X-Men. So, I think, I don't know what they're going to do with Deadpool either, with them bringing in Wolverine. Um, I've been hearing rumors that this is supposed to be a um, Deadpool Unalives, the X-Men universe or the Fox universe type thing to give them room to sunset the X-Men characters that we know and start the resurgence of the X-Men with new characters and new team members. It's a lot of rumors circling around what's going to happen when we get to Secret Wars, what's going to happen with this multiverse saga, and what's going to happen with the X-Men. If those listening or those watching know some extra information that I be may be missing or something that I said wrong, leave it in the comments and let us know. But I would say, for me, honestly, I have kept myself out of the loop on Marvel updates because every time I see one, it's either not enough information, something right. that I really didn't care about, or something that where I'm like, why is this news? Right. Or like, why can't y'all just wait till the trailer comes out? Why can't we wait until we get an official announcement? Like, there's a lot of people on the internet claiming to have talking to people on the back end from Marvel that know these rumors, this, that, and the third. And it's just like, I'm so sick of hearing updates from Marvel that I'm just waiting for trailers. I'm waiting for official announcements. I'm waiting for what comes out of um, San Diego Comic-Con 2024 because Marvel will be having a panel and what's going to come out of D23, which is Disney's big showcase thing that's supposed to be happening i believe in august right so if it turns out that what the you know the people on the internet are saying are true then that's fine but like i think at a point of time like after we after like ant-man after i didn't watch secret invasion and all these other marvel series that has haven't been like like hasn't been like connecting to like what phase five or what this whole multiversal saga 
is supposed to be about, I've pretty much just checked out. I agree. Of it. Like if it's like if it's not something like a big trailer like this is I'm I'm on the opinion and I don't care until Disney says it, Marvel says it, or Kevin Feige gets on somebody's random ass podcast or they get some random ass interview with Kevin and he says it. I can agree to that because it it is getting to that point where it's like, let's quit talking about it. We barely know what they finna do with these movies. We see them dropping. Let's see what they go for, and we'll just experience it. Either the MCU is going to become stop talking about back it and into, be about it. Yeah, either the MCU is going to go back into its golden age again, like it did with the Avengers saga, or it's not, and we're just going to get like two decent movies a year. I think people will be fine with either. Fine, not I... obviously excited. <laughs> I just I just want to see I guess I'm I'm waiting for everything to connect. I think somebody made a good point on Twitter. I forgot what page it was that like the first few phases of Marvel weren't, you know, hot shit. And I and I think I would have to agree. But I think when it came to the storytelling and tying all of the pieces together, where we kind of where we at least had like an inkling of where this was going, I think is what sold the first couple phases to me. The Infinity, um, Stone Saga, the Infinity Saga, like even though there was some of some of the movies weren't like bang 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 boom boom boom, but the storytelling, the way they were putting things together, how we could see how this could connect and what it's leading up to, is what was selling it for me. And Phase Four. And what we're getting in phase five is not selling for me. Like, I once again, I said this a long time ago, I feel like we have different pieces of a puzzle and it's hard for me to put this shit together. Also, also we also got to take into consideration the variable that they didn't really have. We didn't have the highest expectations. Like we, at that point when phase one and two was releasing, Spider-Man was like the hottest Marvel hero. Hulk with the various varying movies from the back in the days in the 90s and we really just liked X-Men which was tied to Fox like when MCU was like we're merging all these heroes and we're introducing hero heroes you didn't ha- care about we kind of were open to more failure or some things not being perfect or something not having the best story or something not having the best animation but once we start seeing them Avengers movies and then we got to the final one it's like our expectations are here now but because mm-hmm. our expectations are here, when it comes to phase five and these future phases, it's harder to meet that, especially if you're starting from the ground up with building a new universe, because we're all still expecting this. We all saw this. And right now, y'all are kind of right here in the middle. I think now the productions on some of these shows, if we want to talk about the the evolution of like the mm-hmm. production of the movies, I don't think it's lacking. I For just sure. think that... It- I just think that the money that we're spending, or I won't even say we, because I'm not paying for the shit. The money that Disney is spending to fund some of these projects, I feel like could go towards other things. Or, or if, or coming from a second perspective, if Kevin Feige truly believes that some of these projects are essential to the end goal. I feel like maybe we could be tying some of these movies together a bit better. Yeah. yeah. I feel like at this I feel like at this point we should have some idea of how everything's going to play into Secret Wars. And I me personally, like I could do a deep dive on YouTube from a bunch of people who have these theories that's read comic books or oh we could go like this because of this what happened in the comics or because this happened, this might happen. Like, I can go on a deep dive, but I just... I feel like at this point, we're supposed to know at least a little bit of something. I'm not saying make it blatantly obvious, but, like... I don't know. I I feel like I'm just watching shit. I'll say it like that. <laughs> I feel like I'm just watching shit. Like, they're, they're, it's almost as if they're moving to what DCEU was. Like it, it feels it feels like I'm just watching shit. Like you're telling me multiverse saga, you're telling me secret wars. I know about secret wars. 
And I know the players who are supposed to be there, but then when I look backwards, I'm not seeing Secret Invasion leading into Secret Wars. I kind of saw where the Marvels and Multiverse of Madness are supposed to lean into there, but when's the next time we're going to revisit those? Let's get into the Eternals. Where the fuck are they supposed to go in this? Thunderbolts is about to come out, and as much as I love Yelena, where is that supposed to fall into? They just mentioned something about their start. they're about to start working on the Young Avengers. That's cool, but if we're saying Multiverse Saga, if we're saying uh, Avengers Secret Wars, then, you know, what's supposed to go in? What's supposed to go into that? Those are all fair points. And then it and then let's not even get started on the fact that they are basically booting. I don't know if they're going to recast or they're just going to boot him out completely, but Kane the Conqueror, that shit is still up in the air. Honestly, honestly, and I'm okay with it, obviously. We said this before. I think they're gonna bring him back at this point. Like because they haven't made no announcements, I feel like their marketing team is like Let's see how people respond to seeing him in the news, how when he's in passing. We just seen this little funny stuff with Michael Ealy and Megan Good. Like, I feel like they're not getting rid of him if I, I had to hedge my bets. And I would have to disagree with you. I don't think they're bringing him back. I could see them keeping him. I, I could see them keeping Kang the Conqueror if he is essential to the plan, but I don't see them bringing back Jonathan Majors. Where is Kang supposed to appear in all of the future movies, or do we not know that? So, of Avengers Five was supposed to be Avengers Kang Dynasty, and it was supposed to be focused on Kang is essential to like the multiverse and stuff because there's multiple variants of Kang the Conqueror. We got that with mm-hmm. Loki. We got that with Doctor Strange in the Multiverse Saga. Um, we got that at the end of we got the magnitude of how many Kangs there were in the post credit scene of Ant Man Quantumanium. And if you look at those three pieces, that's aligning. It's aligning. Right. I think Deadpool and Wolverine is supposed to be doing something with the TVA, which ties back to Loki and which ties back to multiverse stuff. So we do have some, you know, a line where things can tie in. And Kang, when they're saying that this is going to be the Kang Dynasty leading up to Secret Wars, Multiverse, Kang the Conqueror, different variants, all that other stuff, that clicks. That makes sense. But ever since the Jonathan Major stuff went down, the, I would say, in, from what I saw, the fate of Kang the Conqueror in the MCU has been up in the air. I've seen things about them replacing him with Doctor Doom. I've seen things about them keeping Kane the Conqueror, but recasting Jonathan Majors. I've seen rumors about them writing out Kane the Conqueror completely. I think to the point where Avengers 5 doesn't even have a title anymore. I think they ripped out Kane Dynasty and it's just Avengers 5. Hmm. I don't know. If they decide to keep Kane, I think the heat on Jonathan Majors as an individual has lowered down to where there's going to be some bird hurt people, but they ain't going to lose no money over it if they choose to go that route. But I could I also like see them. Get, I guess I could I, also see them doing a different villain. I could see them doing a different villain. Um, Dr. Doom is essential to Secret Wars. So if they wanted to just kick out Kang and just introduce Dr. Doom sooner, um, that's fine. I honestly want to know how that's going to work with Fantastic Four because I believe they said. I've heard two things about Fantastic Four. One, that it's supposed to take place in like the 1960s. And the second thing is that they're supposed to be on a different Earth. They're in a different universe than everybody else. So I don't know. Okay. I I don't know how that's going to play into everything. I could see them switching to Doom and introducing him earlier. And I could also just see them recasting like... um. No Tino Shade on Jonathan Majors, but there are other male actors that could take his place. Does Disney like recasting? Because, like, I was. I'm I mean, they just. Re- I, mean, I mean, they've recasted. They've recasted. I think that. Here it is. They have recasted. I can give you a good amount of. They recasted. Um, 
War Machine. In the first Iron Man movie, that's not the same guy. That's uh, what's I mean, his face? That's Terrence Howard. Two. I mean, I mean, like looking at history, like with Black Panther, everybody got attached to T'Challa, and then they ta- put they put. No, I'm saying like they put Chadwick up on the pedestal and they highlighted him a lot in their marketing, which makes sense for why they didn't want to recast. I was obviously for the recasting with Jonathan Majors before all of the stuff went down. Obviously, they did put him as an actor on an even higher pedestal than they did Chadwick, the actor for the role that he was in. Like, I understand War Machine because that was like more historical and that was like what from movie one to movie two with the Iron Man's back before they really got deep in the Avengers stuff. But with the way they pedestalize the actors and they really make the actors image play a part in their marketing d- is recasting their go-to versus would, say right off this say person this. who we highlighted. I'm going to say this. I feel like the only reason that he got put on a pedestal, he, he did a damn good performance. I'll give him that. He did a damn good performance, but I feel like if, Everybody wasn't like, you know, oh, he's because he because he was because Jonathan Majors was doing a lot around the time. He had just did Lovecraft Country, which people still beg for season two till today. He was doing Loki. He did Creed three and then he did and then his performance in Ant-Man Quantumanium. He has he had the creds. But I feel like if that hadn't happened, if. You know, he just had a regular degular performance, not a star stellar performance, but like right in the middle, regular degular. They could have just found somebody else. They would have just found somebody else. So what do you think was the difference between him and T'Challa? Aside from like the court stuff, but like as an actor and the way they marketed him. Or other than the... but, But we have, I feel like, are we talking about as far as their characters? Or are we talking about actors? Because there is a very, because there is a very clear distinction between Jonathan Majors and Chadwick Boseman. As terms ter- in terms of a recasting, because when you say like, because I'm trying to follow your logic, when you say like he was in a lot of great movies, so he was a, he was like the golden child just, for actors for I'm the just world. Saying at the, the way moment. that he the way that he was coming up when everybody started putting their eyes on Jonathan Majors, he was doing a lot around that time like they were praising him for his performance in lovecraft country they were praising him for his performance in loki then he did creed 3 they praised him for that and then around the time that creed 3 came out i think a couple months later that's when ant-man came out i'm but just saying that but that's what i'm but here's where i'm trying to understand your logic because then you say i could you could easily see them recasting him so then my question would be, if this is the same Disney with the same leadership, what was their thinking when it came to Chadwick, if Chadwick as an actor didn't accomplish or wasn't wasn't being highlighted in the media as extensively as Jonathan Majors? Because it seems like recasting was just not on the table for him. And that's not me coming from this point of somebody who was for the recasting. It's just me trying to understand your view of Disney's leadership and how they approach these situations. Because I think they I were, think from the... Mm-hmm. I let me say this. I think they could have recast it to Chala. I don't think it was a no go. I think what the hesitancy was, what the pushback was that we don't have with Jonathan Majors, that Chaswick Bozeman passed. And that's where the roadblock came into. I'm not saying that you're wrong, that they couldn't have recasted him, that it wasn't an option. I think it was just the fact that he passed and everything surrounding that is what led them to the decision of not recasting him. Because if, if it was the situation that Chad Bozeman just didn't want to play T'Challa anymore, I think it would have been fine. And I think they would have just found somebody else. But that wasn't the situation. So because he passed, you think they just, it was, they wanted to memorialize him in a way or they wanted to play on that marketing and- perspective i wouldn't say play on a marketing perspective but i do think they wanted to memorialize him because of the impact because we always talk about the impact that black panther one had when it hit the theaters and for the movie to be so monumental and for it to influence all of the things that came after that that losing him unexpectedly because it was unexpected a lot of people did not know of his illness 
And because it happened so unexpectedly, I think that was the hesitancy of do we recast them um, with everything that we have coming up. And I feel like that was the roadblock, which is very, that's why I would say that's the very clear distinction between what's happening um, with T'Challa versus what's happening with Kane the Conqueror and Jonathan Majors. Okay. And okay. and that's that and that's all I'm and that's all I'm saying. But I'm not saying that they couldn't have. I'm not saying it wasn't an option. I'm just saying that very clear distinction of what happened with those two actors is more than likely what drove them to go into that direction. No, I can see that perspective. I can see that perspective. Cause I'm interested to see like because we'll never get these answers, right? I'm interested mm-hmm. to see like when they have like their survey groups and um what's it called? I think it begins with an F in the word. When they just have people like, hey, this or this, raise your hands. Like, I wonder, like, when they look at Jonathan Majors, when they look at these different actors, when they look at which villain should we go to, what are they survey samples saying? And what would they Mm -hmm. prefer? You know what I mean? Because it's hard to just get on X and be like, who's for this and who's for that? All you see is likes and everything got likes. Or Instagram or any other social media platform. I feel like I am under the terms that they're not bringing him back because I I feel like if they were bringing him back, I feel like we might have known by now. I just I just feel like that's not I feel with something that major, given what happened, given them coming out publicly and saying that they fired him, and then you turn around and saying that you rehired him, I just don't feel like that's something that you can just keep under wraps, especially when you got all this stuff moving on. Mhm. I'll be interested to see. I'll be interested I'll, to see. I am interested to see. Like I said, Marvel is supposed to be having a panel at San Diego Comic Con 2024, um, which they usually give updates about upcoming projects. Sometimes they do bring out actors and actresses for the projects that they're planning. And then we also have Disney, um, the D23 showcase that's coming out in August. So hopefully you know, Mm -hmm. we get some more info of where they're supposed to be going, at least with Avengers 5, because I honestly feel like either that was either it was 2025 at first and they moved it back to 2026, which in my head, I feel like that's what happened. So for two years out from Avengers 5, they got to give us something because they didn't remove the Kang dynasty from the, uh, from the title. Right. And what are and what are my stuff was like, but did you say the dates for um San Diego Comic Con? Like when is it this year? Um if you know. I know it's the same I know it's the same weekend as DreamCon, which I think is like July twenty Okay, so two yeah. weeks from now. Yeah, it's two weeks from now. So I think it's the twenty sixth through the twenty eighth. I know they usually start that Wednesday and Thursday. I know San Diego Comic Con has a lot of days. So it's somewhere between the 24th and the 28th. That's when San Diego Comic-Con will be happening. But I think the big panels for like Marvel and DC and stuff usually happen on the weekends. Right. Okay. And and yes, I am bitter that the year that I don't go to San Diego Comic-Con is when the big leagues come back. Yeah, I am. I was going to bring that up. I was like, because you show did go the year when they all that stuff, you get didn't really get to explore it, experience that. Uh, mm-hmm. she said i ain't going to San Diego comic con for another few years f y'all uh, that was crazy but yeah well we'll see what marvel has up their sleeve we'll see mm-hmm. but um so those were all the announcements like um i told you guys before make sure you follow us on our social media platforms um you can find them in the description below so you can get updates on when we do mod reviews on some of these projects. Um, and then make sure you're keeping up with the episodes because sometimes we talk about um, certain projects. We'll do like a little mid-season review or something like that. So make sure you keep up. Okay. So moving into our discussion points for today. So we're going to start off with Crunchyroll. So Crunchyroll has been getting some heat the past couple months. Recently, They've gotten some heat because Crunchyroll has removed the comment section from 
um, the streaming service. They are keeping the rating system in place, but all history, um, any comments from this year, last year, or 10 years ago are gone, and nobody will be able to post comments on anime episodes or articles. I think it's both episodes and articles. Um, they also got some heat for uh, reading the article. They basically got heat for considering using AI for their subtitles. As far as March 2024, it was clarified that Crunchyroll is not using AI in their subtitling, but the idea was brought up. And as you know, as that goes, if Crunchyroll does decide to use anime in their subtitling, that will replace the human translators that they have that are currently doing the subtitles for the animes on the platform. So, so I'm going to add a little bit of extra background to the AI section as an anime fan. I can't remember how many months ago it was. It was around the time when I was playing Baldur's Gate 3 and I was playing, playing it around its peak when it released on consoles. There was a translator, and I believe she worked for Crunchyroll, who, you know, put the subtitles. And there was a lot of backlash because a lot of people recognized that she added her own political opinion into her translations and certain okay. words that were utilized by the Japanese when translated to English, she personally deemed it as inappropriate or not aligning with her views and what should be presented in America. It wasn't Crunchyroll the business that decided that they just trust her translations. Mm -hmm. And it came out that she was doing that. She took pride in that. And to my knowledge, I knew her name back then, but I forgot. I don't know if she still works there. I don't know. I can't remember if Country Road dropped a um, public address for it and apologized or anything. But that is why, as an anime fan, not with my business, oh, I want to I want to strengthen the economy finance hat on, just as an anime fan, where I'm like, I kind of am for the AI, even though AI can have some biases and all of that built into it as well, but not my business hat, just an anime fan hat. Because... I Go ahead, mm -hmm. finish, your, finish your thought. Oh, Because as an anime fan, I recognize that Japan has a different culture, different politics, different histories, different views on things from my American view, let alone my Black race as an American view. And I don't want that to be filtered and altered by someone else's perspective because I'm watching Japanese anime as a fan of Japanese anime and their culture. I mm -hmm. want to see the messaging and the and the imagery that they wanted to present to me. You shouldn't have the ability to switch that for me, especially if it's not on behalf of the company. If it was the company doing it and they verified that and they stood behind that, then mm -hmm. I'll be like, I'm just sick of Crunchyroll. Can I find another alternative in another company that translates? But this was one person who took that initiative when your job, I assumed, would have been to give honest translations to the best accuracy and efficiency that you have and based on your resources that you have available to you. And we wasn't getting that. We got your own political views. Nobody, I didn't ask for that. As an but does fan. but does AI solve that though? Because you you stated in your argument that AI can be built with biases inside of it. So, but so does firing all of the translators and replacing it with AI fix that? It depends on how the AI is utilized and what data is put into it. Because if you're using raw translation data, and this is where the bias can come in play. If you use raw data for this Japanese character means this word, this phrasing and this slang means this in English, then cool. But if you set it to where the AI red flags certain words, whether they're deemed offensive to a certain group in America, and then mm -hmm. you tell that AI please replace that, then it's just as bad as the translator. But hopefully y'all ain't going that far in the AI. If you don't well, go that far in the AI, then the bias is essentially eliminated because it's just a direct translation. Or it could just well, be how, flawed, but that's not bias. So even then, if we decide to fire all the translators and use AI, are we trusting AI that is going to give as give us an accurate translation of what's happening? Because we talked about this on the last episode with the Apple AI stuff that with like with them trying to use AI to generate scripts that we still want people to go behind the AI and fix things and tweak things. So 
fire the translators do we trust the upfront translation from the ai or do are, are we still going to need somebody to come behind the ai and make sure that this translation is correct and it's accurate so if my tech business had on we need both obviously the ai mm-hmm. can make a lot of their jobs easier and they can just come behind and make sure everything aligns both my anime fan hat on and that specific lady in general i just don't appreciate what she did with it I don't but want I, people to get fired and lose their jobs, but I feel like Crunchyroll need to set some restrictions or some guidelines or make like a promise openly as a company that regardless of what is being translated, we will translate the message that these Japanese artists wanted to present. I just feel like the solution that you're suggesting is is not going to solve the initial problem. Because if, 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 if we're, if we're going to put the business hat on and say that we we need both. What's stopping the person coming behind the AI and doing the same thing the lady just did? We just, we just now, we just have an extra step in place. The AI did it first, and now somebody can come behind the AI and be like, well, I don't like the way you translated that. Well, I don't like the way the AI wrote that sentence. And now we're back where we started. And and that's what I'm saying. That's where the company has to set restrictions, and we need some quality assurance. Like so, We need some what, people who are but saying... What does, but I'm saying, what does automation... If they have to do that anyway... They can do that now with the people, with the translators that they have. They could fire her appropriately because that's, you know, you're harming the integrity of the of the company. We can do that now. We can put things in place now, pr- policies, procedures, restrictions for the people who are there now. What does what does adding automation, what does adding AI do for that that they can't do now? Speed and efficiency, because it makes backtracking easier. Like, it's one thing if by hand, and I don't know their processes, more than likely but they already have some type of tech. But speed and efficiency doesn't seem like the problem. We're adding AI to, and, but that's not the problem. Speed and efficiency doesn't well, seem like the problem. Well, that's why I have two hats on. As an anime fan, I'm like, F her. If y'all ain't finna do nothing to fix that, get rid of all them folks in there. And that's why I support the messaging of, use ai despite whether or not bias may in, be integrated into the ai because to my knowledge google and apple's ai doesn't seem to have much bias in it when it comes to translations now my business and anim- and my business had is hey y'all need to make a public announcement y'all need to get rid of her because she's ruined y'all's image and makes it seem like y'all ain't doing y'all ain't trust y'all ain't y'all don't have enough trust from the fans to actually translate these japanese works of art and then if y'all want to keep the AI or whatever AI y'all are utilizing, utilize it for automation and speed, but y'all still need to do something about her. At the end of the day, anime fans are mad about what she's did as a translator because and, your and politics I, and I get that. there. And I get that 100% that the core problem of translators inputting their biases and beliefs when translating um, these Japanese animes into English subtitles I agree with that. I just don't feel like AI is going to solve that problem. Mm-hmm. I, I don't feel I, like it'll I solve the entire problem. Yeah. I understand that on the initial translation, that we'll get something that we're not, it's not starting with the human, but I still feel like, I feel like even though AI is rising up and then this is the big thing, I just don't feel like we should just blindly trust AI to make accurate translations. Somebody still got to go behind and check it to make sure that the stuff is right. And even then, then we're back, then we're back at square one that some, we could end up hiring a AI assistant at Crunchyroll who is inputting their biases and beliefs behind this AI because they don't like the way the AI translated it. And that's what, and that's why we just need quality assurance. Like that's why. So the and, and real, I don't I feel, so, the, so the real, I feel like the real solution is, the real solution is that I know it's a lot of animes. I know this might seem like a lot, but right, quality assurance, but not on the translator part. We need somebody at the top. We need somebody to be like, hey, you're in charge of, you know these shonen animes i need you to go behind before we put out this subtitle episode and just you know take a look at it or something i i get it i just feel like 
even if we add AI, there is still room for human error and people to input their biases. I I don't know. Maybe we, I don't know. She said, "I ain't finna jump in that that whirlpool of anime fans." Because she said, "I know how they get." <laughs> but I, I'm just saying. I'm just saying though. I feel like, and I don't think there's any fault to Crunchyroll that they trusted their translators to translate these animes yeah. um, for for the fans. I don't think it's their fault of their own for trusting their staff. But I feel like if the issue was coming into where you can't trust your staff. I don't think AI is going to help that trust because then there's a lot of people that don't trust AI. Yeah. Hon- so where's honestly, so where's the final so where's the final check? So before we put this episode out, where is the final check? Who do you trust to look this over and be like, this is A okay? Yeah. And that's where a good quality assurance team, like when you break it down and you also have the people who come into the business and like Let's start. Let's start with hiring, because if you go into your HR department and you have, have you ever taken one of those bias C test? I mm-hmm. did it at work, but did they ever do that on your on your side of things? Okay. There's bias C tests that that will like from as small as look at this image and how do you interpret it, and what do you think this person is doing behind this cape or whatever. And then there's bias C tests that will show you certain faces. It can figure out your politics. It can show you your bias for a certain race, your bias for a certain sex, how classes you are. There are some very distinct bias tests. And I feel like Crunchyroll needs to integrate that into their hiring, especially for translators. Because either y'all are going to commit to delivering the Japanese messaging from their shows, or you're going to commit to commit to showing a Americanized version of that show and what it should be telling you. And I think don't no anime fan want that. And if we found out that that's what they've been doing, I feel like most anime fans would be disappointed. Because I... show me what they had. I would agree. I think more, and they could already be doing it. It could just be one of those things where they, you know, it, it's this not fell through the cracks. Yeah, it's not left left field for something to fall through the cracks. Mm-hmm. It's not left field for you to hire somebody and then two, three years later, now they off their rocker. Something happened and now they have a completely different personality than when you first hired them. That's true too. Like she could have been there for like ten years, and like at first five years she was true and honest, but now she found her favorite Cause, cause, I mean, politician or somebody to follow. Exactly. If you think of all the things that are going on in the world now, people's views change, and and I'm not saying like people being flip floppy, but I'm just like you learn new things, you you gain new perspectives, you get new beliefs based on your experiences and what you're going through in life. Now, with that being said. Have, whether she got this was her first day here or her third year here, very un, unprofessional of you to go into your workplace and implement that. Yeah, into your own political, yeah. So, but yeah, it could Crunchyroll could already be doing that, and if they if they aren't, I think that could be a good start on your hiring process for translators. But I still feel like even once they get into the groove of things, it's got to be somebody who's looking at the stuff at the end. You get, you have to. You got to now. Yeah. You have to have to. somebody who's going to come at the end and give it a stamp of approval that gives it the Crunchyroll stamp of approval. That somebody from Crunchyroll looked over this and said, and take you know, responsibility and take accountability that this is okay before we ship it out. I just don't feel like AI... Is going to solve that problem. I yeah. agree with the I agree with the speed and efficiency that it may you know we may be able to churn out episodes faster if we put it through the AI first. But even then, you still need somebody to go behind it. It makes that sure validation that process still needs to be there. With a it still touch. needs to be some type of validation. We just don't need to blindly trust the AI. It makes it faster, yeah. sure. Makes it more efficient. Sure. It leaves it, it, you know, takes out a couple more steps to the process, but we cannot blindly rely on it. If if we having issues with the humans, we damn sure gonna have issues with the machine. <laughs> she said this terminator anime gonna show y'all. Hey, now, look, 
<laughs> I'm in, I'm interested in the Terminator anime because they're they're calling it Terminator Zero, and I haven't read like I don't know if there's a synopsis out. I know I haven't read it. I wonder what time period in the Terminator franchise is supposed to be happening. Is this after, um, what do they call it? Judge? Is this after Judgment Day? After Skynet then sent all the nukes and everybody? Like, are we in the middle of the war with John Connor and them? Or this is, like, before where they were sending the Terminators from the future and trying to get John Connor and them? Now, the way the poster looked like, it looked like this after Judgment Day. I wouldn't be against if they started a new reboot since it's, like, the anime universe. Because, like you said, I don't know if it's in the Terminator universe. I don't have the highest knowledge of the Terminator universe. I wouldn't be, against, I wouldn't be against it being a separate anime universe. But... Going back well, to your old topic, well, are you be, mad that you wouldn't can, be able to... It can be mm-hmm. separate from the movies. If it was separate from the movies, like, you don't have to know anything about the movies at all, I'm fine with that. But I think as far yeah. as the franchise goes, their Judgment Day is that moment for Terminator. Right, okay. So is this post-Judgment Day, or is this pre-Judgment Day? Right. And that's why I don't know. Or Judgment Day might be episode one. And that's that's fine too. If Judgment Day is episode <laughs> one, and then everything that happens in the in the anime is everything happening after Judgment Day, that's cool. Yeah, because it's definitely going to attract a new audience. That I'm almost conf- I'm I'm pretty confident that a, not a large percentage, but a chunk of the viewership is going to be people that probably were not watching Terminator, but they watch anime and they're like. I see the familiarity. Now I'll actually watch it because I never actually watched the real movies with um, what was his name, Arnold Schwarzenegger or something? Not Schwarzenegger. Oh, I. I, 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 I can't even blame you. That shit is not he said Schwarzenegger. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't know, I, don't know. I don't be know these folks' name, bro. Oh my I, gosh! I to, how you pronounce it, bro? I believe I it's it right. Arnold, Arnold Schwarzenegger. I understand what, what it sounds like. What did you say? I don't know. Yours sounded real close to the hard R. Yours sounded real Schwarz- close to the hard R. Schwarz- Just call that man Arnold. Just call him Arnold. Ar- hey Arnold. Arnold, like we can we can call him Arnold. We can. Okay. But the folks who probably don't have the highest affinity for Arnold and their parents watch Terminator, but they never watch it because they're like younger kids at the time. Like I think I def- Terminator's gonna get a large chunk of that audience. I think it can get people back into the franchise. I think it's just I think it's the same thing they're trying to do with this Tomb Raider anime as well. Cause we talked about that last time and I don't think that last movie that Paramount Par- Paramount put out did really well. The games mm-hmm. I love the ter- the Tomb Raider games, but you know there's not a lot of people who play, you know, the games. And then I think everybody, and, and you could say the same thing about Terminator, like when the Tomb Raider movies with Angelina Jolie were debuting in like the, the 90s or whatever, when they had the first round of Tomb Raider games on the PS1, that's an older, that's an older generation. Yeah. They're trying to keep Tomb Raider alive. I'm not mad at them. I'm, I'm not, I'm not mad at them. Some I money think in there. Yeah. Tomb Raider is a, Tomb Raider's a nice, these two franchises, Terminator and Tomb Raider, are some really good franchises that I feel yeah. like they could do they could do a lot with. I think making it animation and and we had the you know the controversial discussion on whether or not these should be considered anime. But making it anime animated I think is also a plus because now they can do so so much more with the franchise. I'm surprised they're not trying to do that with Indiana Jones because I think did that game by but Bethesda, or was it like a sub studio under Bethesda for Indiana Jones? Did that ever come out? Was it an Xbox exclusive? So I don't know if it dropped. I don't know. It's not out. They debuted it at somebody showcase. Can't remember which video game showcase it was, but I wasn't impressed with it. I don't even know how much the movie because they just released the Indiana Jones movie last year. I don't know how well it did at the box office, but I I'm. I don't remember. I don't. I don't remember how. How let's we can look that up. Like for and them, for them Indiana. to be doing old franchises. I like for them to be doing old franchises. Like if they're making a Tomb Raider and, and Terminator anime, 
I I would think that Indiana Jones or let alone Star Wars or Star Trek would be up in that in that ballpark too. Um, I'd be darned so, if I'll do Harry Potter. So the last Indiana Jones movie made three hundred and eighty four million at the box office. So that's not bad depending I'm, I'm, on the budget. I'm not a big Indiana Jones fan. Like my dad watched some of the Indiana Jones. I don't even know if he saw this one. But that uh, that was like a Gen X baby boomer type of brand for them that they loved and behold. But um, yeah, I'm not the the biggest Indiana Jones fan, but Star Wars is a is a different different story. Like they still making Star Wars stuff as far as active. games, very active games, movies, comics. Like the Star it's just Wars interesting because you know still very active. It's just interesting, though, because, you know, like, when deciding what to make an anime, like, with the Suicide Squad, Isekai, like, Suicide Squad's still recent on our minds, but Terminator and Tomb Raider, it's, like, not too far away from our minds, but not recent either, but they mm-hmm. got an anime, so I'm, like, interested in, like, what was your thinking behind not say, like, where is a Star Wars anime-style cartoon or a Star Trek animated star cartoon or, well, this, or Indiana well. Jones one? So, Star Wars has Star Wars Visions, which, well, Star Wars has a lot of animated series to begin with. So Yeah, like, I used to watch Clone Wars, the, I think. Clone Wars, um, the first movie with the 2D animation, then you have the series with the 3D animation, and then I can't remember when they came back for season seven, but um, Tales of the Jedi, which I enjoy, uh, Tales of the Empire, I need to watch that. Star Wars Visions, season one and season two, where they had different animators animate different Star Wars stories in the universe. Mm-hmm. You have Star Wars Rebels. Like, they they have a lot of animated content. So they just got a lot of stuff going on anyway to where anime ain't going to be the first thing on their mind anyway. So, okay. Right. So, I mean, they, they, have a, they have a lot of... Star Wars has a lot of content. Right. No, that's I, fair. I, that's very fair. Tomb Raider in... Um, Tomb Raider has more content than Terminator. There were were there any other Terminator vi- were there any Terminator video games? They, they, I'll be surprised they, if there wasn't at least two. I now they probably do, but like maybe like back in the PS2 days and on back, they probably got games. But Tomb Raider yeah. had games on PS4. I I don't want to say. That they were, I don't think they released one f- like exclusively for PS5, but the Tomb Raider game, the Tomb Raider games were basically Uncharted, but with a female main character and having the brand yeah. and having the brand around it being Tomb Raider. And Xbox was heavily marketing them at the Xbox One era too. So I can remember if that was a reboot that they released with the console or what. I think for Tomb Raider. They've done the live action movies. They've done the video game thing. The animated series thing is new. The animated series thing is new for Tomb Raider for Terminator too. Yeah, and I think but they can just going into animation people. for Star Wars ain't even new technically. Just a different. It, style. It's not new. It's not new. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Um, okay. They about to do Lord of the Rings. We talked about the the movie or the series or whatever it's supposed to be. I think I thought it was a movie. They about to do the animated thing with that, so. Look, and going back to some of those announcements, like, even with the um Rick and Morty anime, I was like, that almost seems unnecessary. I'm gonna check it out, because I'm a Rick and Morty fan, but I'm like, for that, I'm, I don't, I really don't understand the cartoon to anime thing. Now, I, the, that sounds c- contradictory, because DC's done it kind of, sort of, but I really don't get that. I would like to see what so, makes a difference because you brought up a good point with DC, but like DC's best content is the animated content. And so we're going correct. from animated content to Suicide Squad East Guy. I we can get into that in a minute because I do want to talk about uh some of the animes that's coming out for the summer season. But I rewatched the first episode of the Su- Suicide Squad East Guy and I I can see the I distinction. Did too. I can see the distinction between Suicide Squad Isekai and if we watch Batman Assault on Arkham or that Suicide Squad Hell to Pay movie. There is a distinct difference between that and what's going on in this anime. 
Yeah, like when I watched episode one, I was like, the vibes of this for the DC animated movies I've seen, I was like, this is definitely different. I see the anime influence. I also see where it's like, it's still Americanized in a few ways, but mm. I definitely see like this, this does feel completely different. Like I was watching that first episode and I was trying to even figure out do I like it or dislike it or not? Like, I think I still need to watch, like, episode two and yeah, three I need to figure to, I need out. to watch. I need to... I I agree with you. I got to the end of it, and I was like, I don't really know how I feel about this yet. You've caught my interest, though. It wasn't immediately like, oh, hell no, I'm not yeah. watching what it is. But I do, need, I do need to watch some more episodes. But before we get too far into Suicide Squad, Isekai, Animo, Anime Expo did happen mm-hmm. recently. We got a ton of anime announcements that are coming this year. Fall season is about to be stacked, and we got some announcements yeah. for what to expect in um, 2025 and 2026. So starting at the top, Bleach Thousand Year Blood War Part 3 is dropping October 2024. Blue Exorcist Beyond the Snow Saga is dropping October 2024. Sword Art Online Alternative Gun Gala Online October 2024. Seven Deadly Sins, Four Nights of the Apocalypse, Season 2, October 2024. Rurouni Kenshin, Season 2, Kyoto Disturbance, October 2024. Um, was there a date on Witch Hat Atlier, or did you, or did they just say Atelier. 2025? Atelier? They just said 2025. 2025. Okay. So, let me, so Solo Leveling uh, um, Arise from the Shadow, I'm assuming that's keyword of solo leveling season two they d- just said coming soon i have some thoughts on that um we're getting another batman ninja movie batman versus the yakuza league and then 2025 um ryan mentioned it on our demon slayer mob review but it or uh not demon slayer but kaiju number eight mob review uh fire force season three did get announced um Part of it is coming out April 2025, and then the next part is coming out January 2026. So, how did you feel about these announcements, Ryan? Because a lot of these that are on the list are uh, animes that you have done my reviews for. So, I'm going to get the easy ones out the way. Bleach, part three. It's lit. It's lit. It's lit. The graphics, the story. I'm a Bleach fan. It's lit. There's nothing else to say about it. I think we're getting into the point where Ichigo and Uryu actually got to have their encounter. I'm looking forward to it. Blue Exorcist Beyond the Snow. By that point, I stopped reading the manga because I think by then when I started back reading the manga, the anim- the new seasons came out and I was like, you know what, now I can enjoy it in an anime format. But the last season of Blue Exorcist, really well executed. I love the art style. It's a little bit more modernized. I love the tone. Glad Blue Exorcist is getting that support. Sword Art Alternative, a lot of y'all may not know about Sword Art Alternative Gun Gale Online. The first one was really good. Kirito and Asuna were not the main characters. It was, um, I know her gun's name. It was this girl who used a gun called Pichon. It was nice. It was lovely. The story was consistent. The plot was consistent. I liked it. I'm interested in season two. I'm interested in seeing what they do with that. Four Nights of the Apocalypse, Portion Foot, when you was reading it out, I gave it an eh. I watched season one and I was like, it's cool. Not give me all of what I want from Seven Daily Sins. I might watch it. I might not. For Roroni Kenshin, season one was nice. It's a reboot from an older franchise from like the Yu Yu Hakusho era, if you're familiar with Yu Yu Hakusho. Mm-hmm. Togashi's first project. So that's like pre Shonen era, the Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z era before the big three really came into when Roroni Kenshin was really big. So the reboot is solid. I'm pissed off with Fire Force season three, though. I'm pissed <laughs> off. Eat your macaroni. I love Fire Force. Eat, eat your macaroni. Eat your macaroni. Eat your macaroni. Go watch your, go watch your Kaiju number eight review, y'all. <laughs> eat your, eat well, your macaroni. Eat your ma- I, I feel you, though. I feel you. I would say at least they said something. Because it really felt like, and honestly, truly, it really felt like Fire Force put out season two and then they just dropped off the face of the earth. Because so you it, watched it too, right? That was like yeah. three or four years ago at this point? That, that was a while ago when I watched Fire Force. Like, yo, and it's one of Kodansha's big shonens, too. Like, Kodansha is the one, the producers of um Fairy Tale. It's one mm-hmm. of their big shonens. They got manga box sets coming out. I'm like, what, 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 what went wrong with the budgeting, the scheduling? What went wrong here? I don't know. I'm so, I don't want to rant. I'm sorry. It, it, I'm happy we got something. I'm mad 
that y'all even have 2026 somewhere written down there. Season one, part one, core one, whatever y'all call it, it better be at least 24 episodes, bro. Y'all better be saying this is season four that's coming in 2026. Please don't piss me off. The fact that they said two dates sounds like they're splitting it up. It might be what they're doing with My Hero, where My Hero core two of season seven um just came back today so they might be doing they it might be that type of situation y'all do a really great job at pissing me because off. because they That's said because they I'll said say. this is the they said this is the final season and i and there's how how the many balls, i think they said this was the final season if this is the final season, that means they got to be 24 episode seasons. That's why I was going to ask you the, how many more, how many volumes is the manga? I feel like I saw somewhere where they said that season three of Fire Force is the end. It's the final season. I never got into reading Fire Force's manga. I planned to buy it, but I was waiting for box sets to actually read it. Um, Manga volume list. Let me look it up. I think I'm seeing... List of volumes, 178. No, that's probably more so chapters. It's 33 actual volumes. So we talking as long as Demon Slayer? How many volumes are in Demon Slayer? I thought Demon Slayer was like 20-something. We didn't get to no 30. We didn't get to no 30 volumes. No. Okay. So so if Demon Slayer is 23 volumes, if Demon Slayer is 23 volumes of content, and Fire Force is 30... Three? That's ten extra volumes. Ain't no way y'all finna finish it off in two seasons. It, I'm reading it right here, though. I looked it up. The overdue announcement delighted fans during Crunchyroll's industry panel at Anime 2024. While, to the audience's dismay, the wait isn't actually over yet. The third and last season of the fiery anime series is set to arrive in the first half of 2025. So that means... They gotta be twenty four episodes. I'm trying. I'm trying to. I should have read. The I, I wasn't. I wasn't saying. I wasn't saying that it wasn't going to be twenty twenty four twenty four episodes. I'm saying that they're probably going to release it in cores. That the first core of this oh. is April twenty twenty five date, and the second core. How many cores? They. It. I'm, it's looking like it might be two. The second core drops January twenty twenty six. I'm interested. I don't know. I don't know, because with 33 volumes and y'all saying it's going to be done in two full seasons, I don't know if these seasons going to be extra long. How many volumes are in Attack on Titan? Attack on Titan is about 30-some volumes a month. Yeah, I think Attack on Titan was like 34. Because it's up, it's up there. And that's what I'm saying. Like, when it comes to that, I don't... Unless I hope they don't rush it. They did a good job with season one and two, in my opinion. I'm not a manga reader, though, so y'all manga readers come in and let me know. But I don't know. I'm gonna watch it anyway, mm-hmm. and I'm by the manga. Um, going to the other announcements because I I can rant all day about Fire Force. Which had Atelier? I don't think I mentioned it to you. It's a super super high fantasy manga, and it utilizes like this like mathematical scientific approach for how they make spell how they utilize spellcraft. If I remember correctly, I peered into volume one. And it looked interesting, but I'm like, I got too many other mangas in my backlog that I need to read, but I knew it was something I was going to dip into because they're giving those free ran Mushoku Tensei high fantasy vibes. Mm-hmm. And then I kind of heard back in the day that an anime may be in the works, but the trailer looked damn good. It Like just as a fantasy fan, just as a fantasy fan, not an anime fan, fantasy fan, it looked damn good. All the manga YouTubers I watched gave, which had actually a high prestige so i'm actually really looking forward to that and i'm going in semi-blind okay like i feel like it's going to fill that hole that free run and mushoku tends to be living it leaving in us fantasy fans hearts mm-hmm. and solo leveling i don't know what they're doing you said you got some input on that i don't know why they ain't got no I, game. I have some i have some thoughts on the trailer that they released i because i was i was watching it again and I was thinking back to our mob review on how we wanted like a bit more to the story. On right. like, but the but the the trailer they showed was all action, and I was like, okay, that kind of makes me kind of nervous. Is the selling or is the selling point the action or is is the story finna take a back seat? Because we did we did praise the animation, they did praise the action scenes we- in the coming in the coming soon trailer. It's straight action. 
You're I gonna get into it and disappoint them fans. You're I was get into a, it. I was a bit <laughs> nervous on where it because the trailer <laughs> didn't give anything on where the story was going. Nothing for a minute, for a minute, and whatever. It'd be different if it was a thirty second teaser. Then yeah, I'll put the bing bang booms in there because you only got thirty seconds. This trailer was like a minute and something of just fighting. We didn't want to tie in anything, you know, related to the story or whatever, what <sighs> going on with everybody else was going on with the Hunter Association. Nothing. I am on your side 100% in full. I was very disappointed with the plot and the character breakdowns that they did in season one. And I want to talk to y'all Manwa readers. I want to hear from y'all. I hope y'all ain't the same people who be hating on Demon Slayer because th this animation was amazing. The fight choreography, mm -hmm. chef's kiss for what it was doing. But where's the plot? Where Where's the story? This video game-esque world, Isekai light. Like, wh what's going on here? My what, what are we doing here? My whole thing is that I can't be hyped because at the end of all of it, at the end of the action scenes, seeing Jin Wu going against like the the whatever the fuck they were doing in the snow and all the other necromancers and all that. Right. At the end of at the end of all of it, I can't be excited because you said coming soon. What does that mean? Coming soon could be 2025. Coming soon could be tomorrow. I don't know. It it makes me wonder if either they're in crunch and they're trying to push it out quick or if they still got some budgetary needs that they're trying to get through. Because I forgot, did we ever did we ever find out who was the, like the studio behind them? I think it was like a studio we was unfamiliar with. I saw something that this season of solo leveling is supposed to be done by A1 Pictures. Now, I don't know if that's the same studio hey. that did season one. Ooh. I don't want to get my stuff mixed up because I just watched a video on this. I think A1 Pictures is more so connected to Anime Plex. If it's A1 Pictures, they got experience with this. Like, they're used to churning their stuff out and having a quality plan, so I mm -hmm. don't know where our date is. Like, if it's 2025, just say that. If y'all trying to push for 2024, then I kind of see why y'all said it's, coming soon, but... I don't know. I, the, the, the trailer just made me a bit nervous for it to be a, a minute and 30-something of straight action. But no story elements. And with No, and, and Jin Woo discovered who he truly is as a person right, and his friends was, are there or nothing. Because I was just thinking back to our mom review of how we felt like some of the plot was lacking. And you know, we were making we were talking all these hypotheticals about where season two may go and how all this stuff is connected. And then the coming soon trailer is just hands. Yeah. And it's interesting because I'm not mad at hands. I enjoyed Windbreaker. I think Demon Slayer is a decent story, and I enjoy Demon Slayer for those who think it's not carried, it don't have a good plot. But, like, solo leveling didn't really give us anything worth of a plot. Like, they really just did a little bit of seeds for what could come about with the guilds here, mm -hmm. his friend's rich family, rich dad over here. Like, they put seeds, but they ain't really, like, push anything forward outside of Jin Woo's abilities. So, like, season two, I mean, like, y'all need to bring some to fruition. What's with that island? Where did these um, dungeons come from? Like, y'all need to give us something. Some more world building something. I agree. Something. I agree. I, I also don't know what the push was to release something. Like, a full trailer for Anime Expo. Because I don't think they released a trailer for uh, Shangri-La. I think they just announced that it was coming back October 2024. I guess I, I don't know what the push was for us, for you to show us something for solo level. And the trailer looked like it had a few things, like almost like a chunk of an episode done up in there. So it's like coming soon. Do y'all got like two, three episodes in progress right now? Like what y'all doing here? I don't know. I guess we'll have to check in on solo leveling at a later date. The Batman Ninja movie, I watched the first Batman Ninja. I remember enjoying it, but that was during my time. I need to revisit it because I watched Batman Ninja during the time where I wasn't like fully checked in into anime. I watched it because it was mm. Batman and not because it was anime influence. 
So I want to go back and watch it and get a different perspective. Now that I, you know, I'm in tune with anime, I know the tropes and the, and the things like that. But this Batman versus uh, Yakuza League look interesting. They're introducing the other uh, Justice League characters. We saw Flash. We saw Wonder Woman. We saw a Green Lantern. Um, Robin's. We didn't know it. which Green Lantern it was. It's it's um one of the the girl Green Lanterns, but I can't remember her name okay i can't remember her name so i um because it's it's hella green lanterns and they have they have a few uh female green lanterns it's like how they have a few male green lanterns but it look it looked interesting the uh the synopsis look interesting um joker's supposed to be involved gorilla grod's supposed to be involved um so I'm gonna watch it, but I'm gonna make sure to watch the first Batman Ninja again through new lenses before I check this one out. That's fair. That's very fair. It it caught my eye. I didn't watch the first one, but I'm like, okay, I think I'll definitely check this out. I don't know if it's like a continuation of the story, but because of how much time has passed, they probably gonna do a good recap anyway. Mm -hmm. So I'll check it out. Yeah, I I thought it was interesting. Well, maybe maybe not too far left now that they've um announced the su now that the Suicide Squad Isekai is out. I don't think it was mm -hmm. too left field for them to come with Batman Ninja behind it. And it kind of makes me think that okay, so we're really committing to this Warner Brothers Japan anime distribution. It it makes me wonder what other stuff they got planned or if right. this is like a test run like are y'all just saying okay we had the first batman ninja but now the anime's big let's drop a second one let's get the suicide isekai and if these go hard oh we finna do a lot more is that what y'all planning like that's what y'all thinking that's what i want to know like is this mm -hmm. a resurgence of dc animation going into dc anime because it feel looks like I... it kind of fits and yeah and I'm curious to see what elements they apply. Because I think Batman is was very fitting to convert into this style. Um, I would like to see what they can do with other franchises. Because, like, the DC Universe has so many characters. So what characters are they looking at to be like, oh, we could merge this into an anime. Or we could merge this storyline into an anime. Like... yeah. They could they could do different genres like they can do horror if they wanted to depending on what storyline they focus on so and they already don't have an issue with showing some brutality in their animated movies anyway and some animes can be very brutal so they have mm -hmm. that freedom of expression if they're doing the anime theme slash anime studio was actually producing it so I could I, I haven't finished Suicide Squad like we said only on episode one but because I'm in that middle where I don't know if I hate it or like it yet. I'm open. I'm open to it. Yeah, I'm open to it. So, let's stay on the anime topic. We're in the 2024 summer anime season. Um, Like me and Ryan mentioned before, we are starting Suicide Squad East Sky. Fairy Tale 100 Years Quest has finally dropped. And if Ryan um, has any other recommendations for you guys, he's going to let you all know. But let's start with let's start with Fairy Tale. We've been talking about Suicide Squad Isekai for a while. So let's get into Fairy Tale. At this point in time, we've only seen the first episode. Um, mm -hmm. By the time you're listening to this episode, the second episode will be out. I've read a little bit of the manga for Fairy Tale 100 Years Quest. So we can just have a bit of discussion about how we feel about Fairy Tale coming back in 2024 and what we um what are we expecting going forward? I am just happy. <laughs> I'm just happy. I'm I I'm going to be honest. I'm a, I don't know if I told you this. Fairy Tale was like the third or fourth anime I discovered when I really got into anime as a kid. Like when I started to realize that Bakugan, Yu-Gi-Oh and Beyblade and Pokémon are actually anime, like when I thought they were cartoons, not then. Right when I started watching Naruto subbed. I discovered Fairy Tale not too long. And Fairy Tale 100 Years Quest just looks like more Fairy Tale and I'm happy. The mm -hmm. art looks good. I think everybody read a little too deep into that picture. I feel like it looks just some, like an um, updated version of the same thing that we are used to and accustomed to. It looks yeah. good. 
It looks it looks think- it definitely looks lighter, but I the way that the animation is drawn reminds me of like the final season. Like it wasn't too much mm-hmm. of a job. Exactly. And like I like that even though we're kind of jumping into like the quest in general, they still allow like fairy tale fans to come back, see what the rest of the guild is up to, have some little foreshadowing with these new introduced characters or whatever, seeing how Juvia's doing Kana, Makarov, Laxis. Mm-hmm. And it was good. It just felt it felt good to be back, bro. This was this is the best way to do an introduction episode for Fairy Tale, in my opinion. It felt good. No, I 100% agree. I'm glad that they kept the theme and the vibe of fairy tale. It felt more like a coming home experience. Yeah. Because, and the only reason I say that is because um, we have had some issues where the manga to anime ad- adaptation, they try to change things. They try to change the tone. They try to change the way the anime feels. But this feels, one, it felt exactly how I read in the manga. And mm-hmm. it's still, in, in if you were just the only anime watcher, it feels exactly like where we left off. Mm-hmm. So I 100% have to give them that. That this still feels very fairy tale. Tone, setting, the character relationships, they sound, it just feels, feels good, bro. I'm, it's a good day to be a fairy tale fan. And did we get an approval for how many episodes this is going to be? Are they doing like a 25, I 24, 12 something- episodes? I thought I saw something that said this was going to be like 24 episodes. Even better. So we get to enjoy this basically all the way up until the latter half of the fall season. I mean, the beginning half of the fall season, basically. Mid, fall. Yeah, I'm I'm here for it. I So based on the intro, where I think they're going to be stopping is a point in the manga mm-hmm. that I haven't got to yet. Interesting. So at this point, I'm stopping on reading the manga and I'm just gonna watch the anime. And then, you know, if it's just if it's just they hitting the mark when we get to this last episode and I can't wait, I'll pick up a hundred years quest again. But based on what I saw in the intro, I think they're gonna be playing with um with some scenes from the manga that I haven't even got to yet. But yeah. Most of the scenes do look familiar. I'm very excited to see how they're going to animate some of this stuff. I'm excited to see how you're going to feel about the villain for 100 Years Quest. Gotcha. What's your thoughts I, on them going to be? So they kind of introduce they introduce them into this episode, and you ain't got to tell me if it's real or not, but like the way it's like, oh, they're dragon eaters, and they're feeding off of, like, the dragon's corpses to, I guess, evolve their powers and strengthen them. I was like, not cannibalism, because don't dragon slayers kind of see themselves as dragons? I want to know if they're raised by dragons. Mm-hmm. It seems like they're on the Acnologia stuff, so I guess they're, like, all elders and, like, 100-plus years old. So that's a nice little twist. It added that sense of danger, being that, oh, yeah, they're basically Acnologia. A whole bunch of them, basically. Oh, well... <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> funny that you say that he he almost destroyed our entire country basically yeah, he, he almost out. destroyed our guild we spent a whole season fighting him and we gotta fight foe okay we, he he messed us up so bad we had to travel into the future by a year or two <laughs> like okay so they really set that tone of danger and made and immediately like jumped us back into the world of fairy tales so i'm interested to see it's, it's i'm a, interested to see it's a lot it's 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 very it's very interesting. They're going to be playing, based on the manga, they're going to be playing with a lot of elements that we didn't get in the first couple seasons because we're in a new country. We're dealing with new forces. The only person who had some experience in this area is Gildars. And as you guys saw in the first episode, they had to sign an NDA to keep their mouth shut about what they see, what they fought, and what goes down. So they're basically in over their head about what's going to go down in this quiz. Which is so funny, because I'm like, wouldn't you want people to, like, plan ahead, work together? I guess it impacts the country a little bit. I don't know. Like, that added a little element, an interesting element to it as well. And then also, seems like there is a subplot. Baby girl who's in love with Natsu might, like, I don't know if she's working for the enemy or she's, like, a secret spy. We got got Jill with the suit on. I don't know what's going on there, but I like it. Like, basically, they just said, we got two full stories going on here. Unless they, And they're, I'm assuming they're going to connect at some point. But it's looking good. 
I can't say too much, but I can't say too I, I I feel like this is fun. I know more than you. you. Like <laughs> I know more than you. This is fun. I like it. I like I like the anticipation. It feels good. <laughs> no, nah, I'm I'm definitely excited that Fairy Tale is back. I'm definitely excited to see how they're gonna be animating these events. And I'm just be I'm just happy to be back watching Fairy Tale. This was the first anime that I watch in full. And I and I say it every time it comes up. I'm so glad that you like Fairy Tale. I've always wanted a friend to talk about Fairy Tale too. Fairy Tale, Fairy All Tale go say. Fairy Tale go in. Like once you get past that first arc that first like introductory arc they be rolling they be rolling i got a hot take fairy tale episode one is one of my favorite fairy tale episodes i'm one of my favorite um intro episodes when you'd see lucy and natsu's like this weirdo and she's like i want to look for the salamander and then you see these dudes and you think they trafficking when really they're trying to find models mm. <laughs> like i remember that entire episode by heart i thought that episode it was like it was funny it definitely had ra- some dark stuff yeah it definitely grabs your attention, and I think that may makes it stand out. Mm-hmm. Cause I feel like I feel like some of that some of the animes that we watched have been like first episode, real bad thing happens, okay, and then fairy tales just like you know the imagine the stupidest thing that could ever happen. Fairy tale episode one. We're gonna kidnap these girls to make them models, and not not like and the I know guy- what you're thinking. But legit models. And the guy and the guy you're looking for has actually been beside you the whole time and said nothing. With with the great legend, he's the salamander. He's a dragon. Legendary dragon slayer that you never that everybody just really wants to meet. And it's like, oh yeah, I'm in I'm here. And I'm in that guild. Oh, the women you're you looking at the models. You were looking for fairy tale? Is, we're right here. Yeah. Right here. Like look, look at this other. there. I got the tattoo. It's, it was a great episode one. Uh, maybe I'm fanboying. I love fairy tale. It is what it is. I'm fairy tale is a fun time. But so moving on to more episode ones, um, Suicide Squad Isekai. We've kind of we talked about this a little bit. It's got my attention. I don't know if I love it. Don't know if I hate it. At this point in time, there's five episode episodes out. So definitely catch up if you were interested in it. I think mm-hmm. I think it would be a it's an interesting concept of what they have going on. It leaves the first episode does leave you if you know Amanda Waller, if you know the lore behind Suicide Squad. I found it very I'm finding it very interesting interesting into why Amanda Waller is looking into this. That's number 1. Yeah, I got that vibe too cuz I'm like I don't know as much of the lore as you, but I did watch the Suicide Squad movies and see how she's integrated into the DCEU. And I'm like, why is she trying to take these folks into a fantasy world anyway? Like, is that just being thrown in there because it's an isekai and we got to get there? But why is she looking into other universes? I, that's, that's my first thing. And it's not like, and, and you're not looking into like, alternate herbs like this isn't the usual multiverse type thing like oh we're we're just gonna send them to a different earth to get this thing or this thing or this thing this seems very amanda waller wants something that's very mythical because why are we in a land with like these ogres and knights and stuff like it's, it's obvious that amanda waller wants something but what do you want from here and how ha- and how did you find out about it? How did you right. discover this? And it, it it makes me wonder, like, is it on some Lex Luthor, Mad Scientist? I'm trying to save the city. Like, I want to discover a new energy source. Like, that makes sense, and that's an easy answer. But I don't think that's the answer. I don't, I don't think that's the answer. I'm curious into what this leads up to. Like, what what is she actually trying to do in this world? And then I think it's just going to be hilarious because I love the team: Peacemaker, Deadshot, Harley Quinn. King Shark and Clayface. I was like, this this is gonna be this is gonna be a mess. Any Suicide Squad team always turns into a mess, but I think this is going to be hilarious. Mm-hmm. And the Harley Quinn vibes were still there too. Like Harley Quinn seeing her, she felt very familiar. Like I was like, yeah, this is the Harley Quinn I'm used to seeing. I would say one thing about DC. They don't they never dropped the ball on the Harley Quinn design. 
or her yeah. character. They, they don't drop the ball. I'm not a big fan of the Joker, only because he reminds me of Jerry Leto's Joker, and I'm not a big fan of him. I I got that vibe, too. I got that vibe, too. I'm not, I would agree. I'm not a big fan of the design. Now, if we get into a couple more episodes and, you know, how they visualize the Joker in this anime really appeals to me, they'll have it. Right now, I'm not a big fan. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. It's funny because it's like for us and like what our primary passions are, it's like the perfect mix for something for you and me to watch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like on some, we got the DC fan here, the anime fan here. I like a little bit of DC. You like a little bit of anime. And it's like, ah, Suicide Squad and East Kyle, let's watch it. <laughs> if this turns out, if this turns to be a sleeper hit, if this turns out to be something that we got to get on the podcast and talk, talk about DC done did something. My review probably coming soon. Well, my review definitely my, coming my review soon. We'll definitely record it, coming. Record it, one. record it. If it if it pushes me, if it urges me to sit down and talk about this, DC done did something. We'll see what DC can do. We'll see. You watching anything else um for the summer anime season that you want to recommend? Honestly, no. I feel like this is like a buy season. I feel like this season of anime is definitely your time for a lot of people, especially if you're like kind of in my genre of like shonen slash well not that's a demographic if you're into like the shonen battle fantasy sci-fi all of that you could go watch tower of god i've heard good things about tower of god i've heard, I've heard good things right now i want to check that out actually because i've been hearing some good things about that too i want to watch that and i want to watch this it, this is an anime and this is kind of off topic but i also want to check out blood of zeus too on netflix i've heard of blood of zeus i've heard of that but it, it feels like one of those bye weeks. In my opinion, Suicide Squad is what I'm watching. One Piece never stops. And obviously, My Hero has dipped into this season, so I'm going to keep up with that as well. But I would say for this summer season, if there's anything you missed from, um, what was the previous season? The spring the season? Spring if you season. missed anything, catch up. Catch up yeah. on the stuff you missed. Fall season finna go and dumb. Prepare. Fall, Fall season finna go and, dummy. And, 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 I'm not, and I'm not even talking about anime. Anna, fall, anime fall season is already going Everything. on. Everything is coming Everything. out this fall. Box Machina is back. The Tomb Raider anime. Um, the My Hero movie. Like, this fall season. got some se- other movies coming in theaters, Arcane, I think. Arcane is coming out in November. Like, come on. Come on. Video, ga- video games. Dragon Ball about to drop soon. Dragon Age about to drop. It's... Being a nerd, we we say like I think last year we said it's a great year to be an anime fan. This is a great year to just be a nerd. I, just like stuff for real. I agree with Ryan. If there's anything that you wanted to watch, anything you need to catch up on, anything that you want to check out, now is the time to do it. Now is the time to do it. Spend this fall, time trying to because the fall season is leaving no room. You yeah, I, honestly, I'm looking. I'm like. Something gotta give. Like when I'm playing these video games, I'm gonna miss some anime for like two weeks playing Dragon Age. Like something at some some time at some point something gotta give. Nah, for real. But um getting into our last topic of the day. Um, we wanna do like a small mid season review. House of the Dragon has been going. Um at mm. this point of this recording, we have made it to episode four. There's supposed to be eight episodes this season. You already know that we're going to be doing a mob review on the full season. But what I want to do right here is just, you know, gauge our initial thoughts. If we can make it non-spoiler, let's do that. Gauge our initial thoughts on how we feel about these first four episodes, and then we'll shut this down. I hate Christian Cole. Ah! I'm so sick of Allison. You said no spoilers. I'm so sick of Allison. They are they are making the greens very dislikable this season. Like they were already dislike it it was they were already dislikable to me, season one. Like season one, I had already chosen my side. I I already knew who I was rocking with. But this season right here, for real, if to me, if you are still team green. At this point of House of the Dragon, we need to have a conversation. Because what's really going on? My sadistic side really liked um, Damon. 
because in a lot of cases, Damon was right. He just went about it the completely wrong way. He might be doing that right now, but I'm not sure. Man, that man stuck playing Luigi's Mansion. I, me personally, <laughs> me personally, I, ever since he left, I have not, I don't care. I don't care about his subplot. I don't, I don't know what, I don't know what this is supposed to be leading up to. And I can't find myself to care. Like something has to flip episode five. And by the time this episode comes out, my perspective has probably ch might have changed. But right now, as far as episode one through four is concerned, I cannot find myself to care about Damon. And, and with no spoilers, no, we still don't know what he did with that dragon that he met in the cliffhanger in the mountains. On I think that's supposed one. to be coming up episode five. Because ha have you seen where like the book readers and some of the deep divers said like that's probably the dragon of the king before his brother? I forgot the king before his brother's name, but the one before Viser 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 like, that's King Jaehaerys' dragon, so that's why it had time to get big and grow and everything. But I'm like, my G, get out and fight and stop get fighting. Get in the field. Both. No spoilers. Get in the field. Get in the field. No spoilers. Even if y'all seen him, we're not going to do it, but man, this last episode upset me. Went out like a G. On some Tully stuff. What was, what was grandma, Marjorie's grandma from um, GOT? They weren't Tully. You remember her name? They weren't Tully. Not, not, not Tully. They were, um... What's her family name with the flowers? With the flowers. Tyrell. Tyrell. The Tyrell grandma, we we seen her... We, this ain't her real ancestor, I think. We, you never know with Game of Thrones, but we done seen how these old women get down. I... And she went out. I saw a um, tweet, or maybe it was a TikTok, and I had to find myself to laugh. Like, how the intent of House of the Dragon as a series is us to watch the fall of House Targaryen. So we going into the series, we know that this is supposed to happen. Everything's supposed to go to shit. But I think just watching it go to shit, I'm just like, oh my god. I can't believe we're doing this. But the whole purpose of House of the Dragon, the whole purpose of George R. R. Martin writing Fire and Blood was to show the fall of House Targaryen. I'm over here like, can y'all please fix this? Please don't <laughs> die next. Please let's make it work. Come on. Like, like it like the impending doom, like the impending doom is in the title. The impending doom is the book that this series is being adapted from. I, I think just I just I feel like we put that on the back burner and just actually watching it. Like even Rainera, she is such a good person. I know they try to play her when she was a kid. She wants so much good in the world and, and is she done? She's done. She was done she after, done my after girl she, dirty. she's done. I I want to see straight action. For the rest of this season, I want to see. Fire and blood. I want it for straight fire and blood. Like y'all, you know they they hyped up the dance of the dragons. This is supposed to be the fall of the Targaryens. I want to see it. I want to see. I feel like these first four episodes, we've been doing a lot of this. We've been doing a lot of sneak shots. I want sneak I'll, dissing. Sneak dissing. I want I want some direct. They done been letting the other houses fight for I, them. I hate the way that you talk. I hate that the, I hate way, the way that, that you walk. walk. I hate the way that you sneak this. I hate, <laughs> I hate everything. I like, hate everything about you. Like I these last four episodes, I I'm excited. I hate that they didn't get ten episodes this season. I hope it doesn't bite them in the ass. Uh, 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 to add, I thought Allison had some redeeming qualities at first. I'm so... Put, put the plan B's down. <laughs> go do, no, go do something with not, your life. No, not put the plan B's down. Close your legs. 
that's plan. That's plan A. Plan, oh plan A. God. Plan A. Close your legs. Like, 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 girl, we in medieval times. You only bathe, you and your dude only bathe about once a week, if that much. We didn't only see her. We didn't see her bathe. She, I, I seen her bathe twice this season. We seen her having more sex <laughs> than bathing, than being a mama. Oh, she's a, a oh, she's a sugar. shit. Oh, she's a shit mother. <laughs> she's she's a, just she's a shit mother. <laughs> <laughs> like there is nothing redeemable. You already slept with your best friend's daddy. But that, but that's what like, I'm let's saying. Talk about it. But that's what I'm saying that they are making the Greens very dislikable this season. They are nothing about them is the, redeemable. The only person who's owning up to the fact that we're despicable is Amon. He is the only person who is embracing the fact that y'all are not good people. He lives in it, and he I can't li- get mad at him li- for that. He I cannot. It. I cannot. I can be mad at him for it for two reasons. I can, but he is the only one that's <laughs> he is the only one that's standing on business. He he's is the, living in his truth. He is the living only. Truth, he's friends. the only one who's standing on business. Nobody else is standing on business. Shoot, I, honestly, I wish either go to aiming route. Or be a little girl, baby girl, playing with her dolls and puzzles and bugs. Like, go play with some crickets or something. I, what's, what's her name? Helena. The, well, actually, she's, she's, she's going downhill. And I feel like I wish we would have gotten more of, like, how the whole blood and cheese situation affected her, really. Because I, I feel like we just, I feel like they moved on from it. And I and I and that's where I'm saying I hope this eight episode thing doesn't bite them in the ass, but I feel like we're just watching, like at the beginning, like blood and cheese was. If you look at it in hindsight, it's a big traumatic event, and I think we just moved on to the next thing, next case. Yeah, they kind of left baby girl like for her character development. They did kind of like, and hey, you're pushed aside. This ain't your show, right? So I. They may come back and revisit her character due to what's about to come up next, um, in the war. But like I said, I hope I hope this I hope this ten episode thing doesn't bite them in the ass. This eight episode thing doesn't bite them in the ass. Mm-hmm. But hey, if y'all ain't learned anything from this, if for some reason you watch season one, you were like us. You were really pissed off with how they handled the final two seasons of GOT. House of the Dragon reignited that fire. A lot of franchises can't two. do that. A lot of franchises can't do that. A lot of franchises cannot bomb. I will excuse season seven. I think season eight is when everybody came together as a collective and was like WTF. It got the only- it was so bad that the Star Wars Netflix project that those two writers had lined up got ripped away from them. And you know what? Where are they? Uh, No, I can't say that. I don't want people to lose money and lose their job. But if you ain't going to do a good job, you can't expect to get hired again. They... Um, We got to have some accountability. Listen... And I heard they rushed season eight because they were looking forward to that Star Wars job. I would just say this. A lot lot of... A lot of franchises cannot bomb the last season of one of the major running franchises of the 2010s and come back with a prequel series and break HBO Max on the debut episode of season one. A lot of franchises cannot do that. Because even the actors and actresses were disappointed. I think after season eight, for an amazing series like Game of Thrones, you would have expected them to be on Good Morning America for like the next three years. We stopped hearing from the actors and actresses was in like six months. Yeah, they moved on doing their own thing. Yeah. Half, but half not the half, I won't say half of them. Some of them in the MCU. Yeah. Like they had to get new jobs because the, the writers just messed them, messed everybody up. I, well, not everybody, but like we saw how good the actor was in the previous seasons, but you know what I mean. Yeah. The assassinations of characters. Assassination of the end of this entire franchise. 
George R. R. Martin keep on trying to speak up. My G, go write the rest of the books. Sit sit your butt down. That I don't. He you keep, do. They keep at the the thing that I hate about when House of the Dragon comes around is that George R. R. Martin does a lot of this. But where the book at? He's been doing a lot. I've been seeing. I've been seeing a lot of tweets with him doing a whole bunch of this about how he feels about House of the Dragon. And it's just like, dog, where the book? You doing a lot of this about the House of the Dragon. You was doing a whole lot of this when Game of Thrones season eight came out, but you still ain't put out no book. Look, and 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 I and here's the funny thing: he has some validity. Like when he talked about the Targaryen logo being messed up, they did have a four legged dragon on like the um sails for the boats. When the Targaryen logo is a basically a two legged wyvern, which is a race of dragon, but I'm like, dude, ain't nobody paying attention to that. I and show, even if we was, I show one paying attention. And even if we was, we can't. How are you? You not the one to critique that. Let one of the book fans critique that. Go write the book. <laughs> Put. Out, are you a whiskey drinker? What's your favorite bourbon? <laughs> Go write them books. Go write them. I go write them. I think the ish. The thing that I saw was that he gave the writers of House of the Dragon full control of the content. And I don't think he's fully disappointed with it, but he has been doing a lot of this since the season started. And my whole thing is, if you, if why get full control if you not, like, why complain if you gave away your control? Either you're going to play a part of the process or shut up. Like, if I, like, for those who don't know, me and Foop have like aspirations for like writing fantasy novels. If I want to, if I'm gonna be upset at how they're gonna, if I'm can potentially be upset with how they bring my um story to life in another form, in another format, then I'm gonna just play a part in the process. J.K. Rowling already announced that she had working with the um directors and the writers for um this house, this Harry Potter series. Yeah, you could do the same thing. I look. You can't be that busy writing because you tw- you you're tweeting. Rider right fingers turn. Rider right fingers turn to Twitter fingers. Not rider right fingers turn to Twitter fingers, please. But um, still a Drake fan. We know. We know. <laughs> we know. But um, so that's our mid season review on House of the Dragon, um, episodes one through four. Like I said, we'll be doing a full mob review of the full season. Uh, once it ends, I think it ends sometime in August. So, like I said, make sure you hit those bell notifications if you're watching us on YouTube and hit that follow button if you're listening so you can get the update when the House of the Dragon episode, uh, my review episode drops. But that was everything that we had for this episode. Like I said, this was a very entertainment-heavy episode, really an anime-heavy episode. (laughs) Um, I mean, a big chunk of it was Marvel, too. We didn't even expect that. But, like, after that, with straight anime. But um with that being said, I think my stuff is lagging. Now my internet went out. That's ghetto. Hello. I'm glad it lagged at the end at least. Yeah, I can I can fix that. My internet just went out for like a split second. But anyway, let me go ahead and shut this down <laughs> before my internet goes out again. Um, so thank you, Ron, for joining me on another episode of the Blurred Mob Podcast. I want to thank everybody who tuned in to the episode, whether you were watching or listening. It is always appreciated. Make sure you check us out on our social media platforms. We're on Instagram at the Blurred Mob Pod. We're on Twitter at the Blurred Mob. And you can find us on Facebook and TikTok at the Blurred Mob Podcast. And if you're feeling also generous, as you can see, my internet acting up, Ryan internet acting up. Uh, We got two ways that you can donate to the mob. The first is our affiliate link to Entertainment Earth. You can find us some Funkos, some statues, anything that your nerdy heart desires. 10% of your purchase does come to the mob. Um, If you look on Entertainment Earth, you can't find anything you like. Um, You can send us a donation using our Kofi link. And all of those donations are used for software, equipment, and everything that we use to bring you guys these lovely episodes. So with that all being said, this is the mob checking out. Peace. I, it we, better be that case. Kaiju no, number nine end up with uh, Kafka. We was kings. <laughs> I'm cutting it off. <laughs> <laughs>
Hey, that's I'm that full time we was kings. We was we was kings, Kafka. <laughs> 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 